The bottom line is that the president's opponents don't like the president and they really don't like his policies. They objected to the fact that the president chose not to rely each and every time on the advice of some of his subordinates. Even though he, not those unelected bureaucrats who work for him, were elected to office. The president, under our constitutional structure, is the one who decides our nation's foreign policy. Here is a perfect example. The House managers brought this up frequently. Lieutenant Colonel Vindman. He admitted on page 155 of his transcript testimony that he did not know if there was a crime or anything of that nature. That's his quote. But that he, again, quote, had deep policy concerns. So there you have it. The real issue is policy disputes. Elections have consequences. We all know that. And if you do not like the policies of a particular administration or a particular candidate, you are free and welcome to vote for another candidate. But the answer is elections, not impeachment. To be clear, in our country, in the United States, the president elected by the American people is, in the words of the Supreme Court, the sole organ of the federal government in the field of international relations and foreign policy for our government. No unelected bureaucrats, not unhappy members of the House of Representatives, and however you were to define high crimes and misdemeanors, there is no definition that includes disagreeing with a policy decision as an acceptable ground to removal of a president of the United States. None. The first article for, of impeachment is therefore constitutionally invalid and should be immediately rejected by the Senate.